Welcome, everyone, as you guys start popping on live here. My name is Chris Cole. This is We the Parents Podcast, episode four. I want to welcome my guest, Dr. Sherry Campbell. Welcome, Dr. Sherry. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. What a great We the Parents. I live for that title. That's great. I'm really proud of you and excited for your new show. It's uh, it's about time. We have we have a lot of other um, podcasts and shows. Um, you know, uh, Dad Talk being one, and and there's a few others uh, who, who are actually starting to connect. But I think it's important for shows like this to have guests like you, um, mm-hmm. people people that um, are the professionals who deal with our children, who deal with our parents, who deal deal in the fields. Also, um, to discuss with some of these parents or, or some of these people in your profession that we know that we're that we actually you know you don't always have a great therapist or a great uh, mm-hmm. psychologist dealing with your case or with your family um, and we'll dive more into that but what I want to do first is nobody knows you better than you I'm gonna let you introduce yourself for the audience who's watching now so I'm dr. Sherry Campbell and I am uh, a psychologist by trade I have a very busy uh, sometimes too busy private practice that I that I run uh, and I write many books on family especially toxic family dynamics is my specialty and uh, yep there's my book uh, for some of us cutting ties is really the only way we can be healthy and that was unfortunately my situation um, I'm a TV media expert and host and I do a lot of writing for major media and uh, very blessed to have a voice and that's my Facebook page and I have probably 130,000 followers and uh, really love my page and love my people and a great place to come if you have a toxic family, whether it's a parent, whether you have a toxic adult child, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, whoever it is, we deal with all, all right. of it. We're so, I'm so excited. I wish I lived in California so I could just get you to help me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you me are going to help. You are going to help our audience and uh, they're going to reach, they're going to be able to see your page and stuff uh, later on. I'll put those things in the link. So they can follow you. Yeah, on your page. And I'll tell you. I chose to go on your show because of the topic. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes I take some scrutiny for the cho- the shows that I choose to go on, but I judge every show by the topic. And the topic, you know, that we're going to discuss today couldn't be more important. And so I have so many people that I work with in my office and many followers on my page who are suffering in a divorce battle around having a cluster B personality X who's manipulating the kids. So this show to me couldn't be more important for all parents, moms and dads. Absolutely. So why don't we dive right in? Let's talk okay. about, let's talk about, uh, you know, the, probably I'm going to give you a lot of, of examples from, from my own situation um, while also trying to be as respectful as I can to my children's mother. Uh, but the truth is the truth. Uh, nothing that I'm saying I can't prove. Um, nothing that uh, I'm saying I won't show in a court of law. But um, I think this is valuable. A lot of the a lot of this comes from you know with divorce and everything is the shame game that's involved. Um, whether it was infidelity or things like that, you know, you may have made a mistake in a relationship, and a lot of parents are afraid to speak up. Um, about what's happening, like maybe they're fighting a custody battle, but maybe they were, maybe they cheated on their wife because, for whatever reason, they're a dirt bag and they cheat on their wife, but they're a great mother, they're a great father, um, and they don't want anyone to know those things, so they sort of stay under the thumb of the other parent uh, because whether they don't want to be humiliated or they don't want to be found out about, and they kind of go along with it. Um, yeah. You know, I think that um, when you're dealing with someone who's a cluster B person who's going to shame shame you, they own you. So when they own you, then you really lose your decision making and your power and you end up feeling powerless to that, that other parent's narrative. And when that narrative is shaming and it's not allowing for any tolerance to failure, because if a, if a couple has split up, there's been a failure on both sides, right? right? And so when one parent becomes extremely shaming of the other one and they they cast that shame down to the children overtly or covertly, then the other parent feels so afraid of conflict. They feel mm-hmm. so afraid of losing their children that they acquiesce to the ex's abuse. Right. Right. Not they, they, able to trust the courts will help them either. 
Mm -hmm. No, and and I can definitely speak from experience. The courts are broken. Um, I, I it's a shame because I remember being a, a, a kid and and you learn uh, trust mommies and daddies and adults and cops and and judges and attorneys. They're here to help, uh, and I'm here to tell you that's that's not all true for most. Uh, it's a job. I would say I agree. I have a handful of attorneys that I refer to that I think are moral. But see, what the courts have done is they have gotten out of the personal part of the divorce. They focus only on assets and timeshare. So there is something uh, called a 730 evaluation that you can pull the family through where psychological testing goes on and you can sort of get and pull out that cluster B personality. But it also pulls your kids through a tremendous amount of pain. They're interviewed. Uh, they're tested psychologically. I, they're interrogated about their own parents. So there's a lot about the 730 evaluation that might be good to identify which parent is toxic, but then it's essentially pitting kids in a place where they don't even want to be honest about the parent that might be more hurtful. They may not be aware yet, but right. they're going to have a loyalty. So also it's extremely expensive. So sure. attorneys also make a lot of money from mm -hmm. this type of stuff, but they're not addressing What's going to happen during the divorce, through the divorce, or after the divorce emotionally? Right. A lot of the things that I've read, and I, you know, I don't even know, maybe Facebook knew that I needed you or something to oh. whatever I was going through, your things popped up and I started following you, whether someone shared it within our movement. And uh, I really became a fan. Oh. And so I've reached out and almost feel like I know you, but I don't know you just because I've, I've sort of watched your videos and, you know, just like I do with my pastor at Elevation Church, I feel like I know him because I watch him every day. So this is very, this is very surreal to be able to actually yeah, speak yeah. about all the things that I've been wanting to talk to you about. So one of those uh, oh, topics, thank you. you're welcome. Um, and thank you for being on the show. One of the things that I want to talk about first um, is something that you share a lot um, in your things about families, toxic family members. And those are borderline personality and narcissistic personality disorders. Mm -hmm. in, in a few minutes, can you basically give an, and, and many of the people in my audience know these terms, know some of the, the, the factors that determine these things, because we research these things. Mm -hmm. for, for our audience, why don't we talk about that a little bit when it comes to um, having an abusive or alienating parent, maybe not physically abusive, um, but maybe they're manipulative, maybe they're psychologically, emotionally, financially abusive, spousal abuse. They're, you know, we really want to talk about the fact that, hey, guess what? All men aren't abusive. Uh, women are also abusive. And sometimes women and men abuse differently. So 100%. Yes. So my book even covers this. I, I talk in my book about toxic mothers and toxic fathers because I uh, had both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually you have one toxic parent and one passive parent. I had two actively toxic parents, which is probably why they didn't last in marriage because they were too similar. Right. So on the whole, this isn't a one size fits all, but on the sure. whole, women tend to be more emotionally manipulative men tend to be, be more overtly abusive in terms of yelling, Jerk. Or banking, or scaring, right? Mm -hmm. um, little children have been proven to uh, be more afraid of a male voice than a female voice. Um, mm -hmm. Moms tend to not get as listened to as well as dads. That's just in general. Um, right. Hi, Isaac. But what I do believe is that, um, at least in my situation, my dad was very tyrannical and my mother was very passive aggressive and very manipulative. Not only was she shaming toward my father, but she was really covertly shaming toward me all the time. And she would always mm -hmm. compare me to my dad if I was bad or she thought I was being bad. And um, he was really bad. So then if I got compared to him, I just thought I was horrible. And he, my dad was <clears throat> out of my life more than in. Uh, thankfully, because uh, he really was scary. Um, mm. But I think that the abuse that probably hurt me more long term was the abuse from my mother, because it was so insidious that I I was too young. Like I just thought it was me. 
Right. So one thing to put out to all parents, uh, and this is going to be coming out in my book that will drop 2022, but that if you constantly criticize your children, your children won't not like you. They're going to yeah. not like themselves. Themselves. So the yeah. borderline and the narcissist, if we want to just kind of package it quickly, I certainly hope you would go look them up uh, online. But, you know, the borderline is very insecure. There is a lot of split thinking. It's very black and white. One day you're in, the next day you're out. You could do a million good things for this person. Mm -hmm. And if one day you're not perfect, then it wipes out anything that you did that was good. Now yeah. you're all bad, right? right? They tend to be pretty reckless as well in terms of maybe eating disorders, substance abuse, sleeping around, uh, things like that. They tend to threaten suicide quite often. Mm. Uh, the narcissist, on the other hand, is very black and white. They love you or hate you. Um, the borderline will kind of beg you back and not let go. Uh, right. A narcissist will just, you're just going to be done until that person wants to suck you back in, right? right. If they have a need for you. But they're both selfish at the core. Okay. They're right. both emotionally immature at their core. So one thing for people to learn that I don't think many that aren't psychologists know is that if you have diagnosably a narcissist or a borderline, they then have traits of all five cluster B personality disorders, including oh, okay. antisocial, which means criminal. So you'll never see more lying or antisocial behavior than when you're divorcing a borderline mm -hmm narcissist or anyone in the cluster B, that antisocial right on the edge of what's legal is very, uh, you'll see that a lot. And the, 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 the judge and attorneys may not see it. And they're going to just, you're going to be like trying to tell them this is happening, this is happening, but they don't right. care because that's not their realm. They want to know about the assets, the division of money and time. So right. that's where the courts really let us down. Right. So what do we do? So when you, what causes, so let's, let's see if we can get to the root of that. What call, where, where does that usually stem from? Is that, is, is that usually happen in childhood? Is there childhood trauma that causes these personality disorders? Well, I think it's a nature nurture. Um, there is, there is, there is some evidence that would suggest that there is a link to these cluster B personality disorders, but they are not considered access one. So they're not a brain chemistry issue, in other words. Right. But most of it is how you're raised and what you see. You're born with a blank little brain, like the movie Wally, if any of you have seen it. He has a little tape recorder in, and he's just recording what he sees. Uh -huh. So that's the love language that you learn. If you learn that love and abuse can coexist or that people who abuse you actually love you, then right. as you as you grow, you're going to allow other people to abuse you and think they love you. Right. When really, if someone really loves you, they would not abuse you, right? right? So as an adult, if you're not well or you you carry on, your mom was a borderline and you've become a borderline um, and you don't know any of that language, you know, you can go through many years of pain before you, you figure it out. And some don't ever figure it out. Mm -hmm. To them, everyone else is wrong. And right. that's, that's that cluster B personality disorder. If you're divorcing someone who's never wrong and they're willing to tell any lie known to man about you with confidence, how do you, how do you defend yourself? How do you defend right. yourself? Can empathetic, loving, healthy people become abusive when mm -hmm. dealing with someone like this themselves? Oh, sure. Uh, I don't know if I would say that they become abusive, but I do think that they become defensive. Right. I had right. to learn the hard way, Chris, when the smear campaign was flying around about me from my family, all these lies. I mean, I felt like the lies got halfway around the world before the truth showed up. And so I actually, uh, I was cut off. I just didn't mend the fence for the first right. time. And in not yeah. mending the fence, you know, for some type of real conversation around ownership. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't continue to take ownership for things that I truly didn't create. Um, and the more I went out and tried to defend myself, the crazier I looked. It almost like it put me, it fit me into their narrative about me. 
Sure. So I had to learn really hard that being silent to them didn't mean I was losing my voice. It just meant I wasn't wasting it. Right. And I I had to face the fear of like, who's really true to me (laughs) and who isn't. And I lost a lot of people due to the lie. And I've had others come back and apologize and, and do the things. But you know, when you have an ex that's smearing you like that to your children, right. That's really hard. What do, what do you think that we need to do, um, in our family court system? I mean, I think it needs to be gutted and restructured. I don't think that judges and attorneys need to be in a family court dynamic. That's high conflict. I believe people like yourself at a reasonable cost. I know you have a private practice, so you probably, uh, make decent money when people come in one-on-one for therapies, this and that. But when let's say, and and we're just making this up as we go, we actually didn't really talk about this. Um, if, if, there was a proceeding where we have a high conflict parent or two high conflict parents. They can't figure out they're, they're fighting over their kids. Yes, it's a legal matter, but, mm-hmm. but criminal, criminal law. I mean, they say that these people are family law attorneys, but there's really no such thing as family law. Uh, judges discretion is family law. So all you're doing is it's a smear campaign of he said, she said, and then the, the, the judge and the lawyers, the grown ups need to mm-hmm. decide for the children, the parents, who the grandkids are, are going to stay with. So, but we, what we really have when it comes to divorce and custody battles and things like that, besides the financial end, um, when you're, when you're talking about fighting over children, that's absurd. So yeah, wouldn't it be better that someone like yourself at a reasonable cost, because obviously people still can't even afford, you know, attorneys at 10,000, 20,000 people are spending millions of dollars because that's where it really goes to show you this business is about what you make. They know what you do. They know how much they can milk you for. Yes. That's why Brad Pitt's paying millions in court, but I'm only spending tens of thousands because it's about equity. It's about how much money. It is. It is a very, it's a very, yeah, I agree. It's very corrupt. What's interesting is that, people like me really aren't protected in that court system. So we try to stay as far away from court as possible. One of my good friends who isn't a, who is a divorce attorney, very well known, probably the best in Orange County is a good friend of mine. And he said, you know, Sherry, divorcing parents are meaner to each other than prison inmates. Right. Right. And I agree with that. And it becomes tit for tat and it's all about the hurt. And I do believe there are some cases where one parent should have the children. If the other one is provably on drugs or in incapable of functioning, right? I don't right. want to leave those people out. I want to try to address everyone we can, especially yeah. because the world thinks in such polarized ways these days. Right. Um, there are kids that need to be with one parent if that parent is has a criminal history, has drug, drug, current drug or criminal history. Um, there are those things, but those are rare. So, or maybe they're not, maybe they're abundant. I don't know. Well, but I, can, I-, I, can, I can give you my, so in, in, you know, I'm transparent about my stuff. Um, mm-hmm. While, while in a very unhealthy relationship, um, I let that get in me and, um, you know, probably had some unhealthy things that I need to work on too, but I was, I was using alcohol to cope with. Um, not very much cause I was working so much to pay all the bills, but when I had downtime, when I was trying to escape, I indulge and I got within a seven year period of time, I got two DUIs. Now on the outside, that looks like, oh, this person's got an issue. Uh, he's got a drinking issue when really I was rarely drinking, but when I drank, I was drinking to, to cope, to numb, to, to something, to reset. Um, And I actually got sober completely for over two years. Uh, And Mm. in that time, in that time, learned a lot about trauma and that there's a difference between an alcoholic and an addict and someone who's binge drinking and coping. And and you really, it it really is, you can't just go, well, someone's got two DUIs. Obviously, they're not getting it. So they're they're an alcoholic. They'll always be an alcoholic. You know, that was what I had to adopt at the beginning yeah. for my, to get sober. And yeah. then now I've sort of recreated this new outlook on life where, you know, I can have a beer or two and go, I'm good. 
Yeah, I will say that, um, you know, it's unfortunate because I think that we all cope with stuff in different ways. Um, I treated a girl who killed someone drunk driving and she's not an alcoholic. She just um, really had a really bad night and <sighs> she still grieves the turtle. She ran over on a four wheeler and I treated her while she was in prison. And the, the police made mistakes that night. So she she got a little bit of a plea deal. But, you know, she she drinks socially. Um, she mm -hmm. had a really bad night. We have to be careful, so careful, especially in today's culture, not to just judge people on a snap judgment. When you're with someone who's really, really toxic, uh -huh. it can cause coping skills like drinking or a, a workaholic or just anything to yeah. avoid going home to the conflict. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I went to the gym constantly. I was huge. Yeah, extramarital affairs are another thing that when you can't cope with this conflict, you can fall into behaviors that, you know, it's that you have to own and take responsibility for at the end of the day. No one can make you do anything you don't want to do. But I do feel like it's really it's not abnormal and you got to find self forgiveness and get yourself off that alcohol like you did and into a right. place of balance. And if you cannot do that in your toxic relationship, then you need to get out if it's making you unhealthy. Exactly. But a toxic ex can absolutely go to court and use that against you, yep. which is and which is sad. And that's we don't psychologists we aren't we aren't involved. We try to not be involved, uh, but for our own safety because we have insurance, we have we can get sued, right? So yeah. we're afraid too. But there are now divorce advocates in California. Um, and they tend to be people who had high conflict uh, divorces and no one helped them. So they've now become a divorce, con uh, a divorce. Uh, oh, what did I just say that it was? I just lost the word. A divorce consultant type of thing. Oh, okay. And um, they can and help you. So it says, I would love to hear Dr. Campbell's view of psychologists making opinions without being appointed to. Uh, no, they should not be making any opinions if they have not sat with both parents. That's very reckless. So this is Ted Bush. He's a good friend of mine. He's an advocate. He's an attorney in Illinois Hi, who's had his contact with his children severed um, without due process. So he's he actually was an attorney that became a family law attorney and is helping others while he's also fighting his own case. And he and I work together and he's mm -hmm. he's a big advocate of me and this show. And, and I'm going to have Ted on one day, too. But um, this is this is Ted's experience, uh, personal experience. That's insane to me. It's like I'll even have couples say I am working with a girl and she's dating a new guy and she tells me about him a lot. Right. I will still always say I've never sat with him. So all I can do is hypothesize. Right. But if I've right. never met or sat and given a clinical evaluation, sat and done the interview. Right. I have no business making a recommendation. I have no business giving an opinion. No she, business. I don't know where he is, but in California, you cannot. Do, okay. The laws in Illinois need to change because in California, you cannot do that. The, 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 the leadership in Illinois needs to change first. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much so, a mafia I mean, out there. I'm not politically minded enough yet to even would know who's even there. But what I will say is, is, um, Unless you sit and have an experience with someone, it has to be more than just one. There needs to be psychological testing. There needs to be several interviews. Like, I think the 730 evaluation would be great if you could leave the kids as much out of it as possible, not interrogating them because their loyalty conflicts are just going to come up. And I've treated many adults who've been put through those 70, 730 evaluations as children, and they have so much guilt. Right. I found it, you know, uh, for for any reason. So there's there's some fallout. But yes, people need to be directly experienced by a professional for anyone to make a recommendation. Should judges be um, sort of speaking with that? That's the thing. We go back to the courts. Should they be making the professional decisions with their discretion, with this legal discretion that they've been given? Um, pretty sure not by the people because no one, if you ask, did you love family court? The only people that love family court are abusers who, um, nobody likes family court. No, you know, most people, no healthy you know, people would love to do anything. Want to go to court and family. let a judge, let a stranger tell you how to yeah. do with your kids. Yeah. Um, but I, I do want to talk about what, what you believe one of the big things in, in, 
in the shared parenting movement is what to do when there is a long custody battle. There's a lot of gatekeeping. There's a lot of um, using of, I'll speak in, for my own case, and it's, it's pretty common. So using law enforcement, using the courts, using child support, using false allegations. What, when you have someone, a parent that's willing to drag you, another parent, the, the, their, other, their children's other parent, through this type of abuse, this this long without sort of giving up the fight, um, you know I do understand that sometimes when when emotions run high, especially early on, it might take a few months for people to settle down and go, okay, yeah. I'm being a jerk. But yeah. When it takes years and there's false allegations of abuse, false allegations of behaviors, fa- you know things that can get you arrested, uh, using child support against you, keeping you poverty, things like that. Is this what is your advice, let's say, just off the record, but sort of on the record, um, to a judge who, after you fought for your kids for two, three, four, five, ten years, and you get awarded 50-50, do you believe that that judge is doing the wrong thing by awarding this other parent who's used this system and you and abused the other no. parent and their own children any custody at this point? From, from just from that behavior that we talked about the the narcissistic the borderline yes. I would assume a lot of that falls under someone just being a little bit more than up, just upset yeah so, if in a perfect world I would say that those parents that use the system the way that they do they put all their histrionics and they cry and they create a false narrative and a lie I do think they should lose custody I think they should have visitation I don't think kids should be robbed of parents I think as adults they get to decide. Right. Now, what if it, I could it be dangerous? Custody because if they're dangerous, yeah. I mean, I think visitation can be monitored. You know, right. you could do supervised visitation so you get to control that narrative. Um, I think that the, what the healthy parent risks at taking the other parent fully out of their life is to have resent later. Sure. And so I think that if they lose custody for using the system and doing the things, what's sad about that situation, though, is that it's hypothetical and it doesn't work that way. Right. So in a perfect world, sure, they should lose custody. They should be able to be seen. But that that isn't. They're going to try to give, at least in California, 50-50 custody. Uh, they don't really care about the antics. And in fact, the attorneys love it because it keeps them paid. Absolutely. Well, that's the biggest advocates against shared parenting is your bar association and your domestic violence groups. Yes. Those are the two that that dispute it. There are so many parents that just finally get to the place where it's the healthier, more empathetic parent, the one who all the lies are told about. They tap out. They tap out because they're losing weight. They're throwing up every morning. They've got anxiety. The police are at their house all the time for false this and false that. I treat a woman who whose mother coached her to say that her father molested her yeah. and she remembers being, um, you know, I think she was like five or six. The mom would tell her you should cry when they do this. And, wow. uh, and so her father has passed away. She did have some type of relationship with him, but that mother on the whole won and robbed my patient of a life with her dad. And she's so hurt now as an adult and it's affecting her marriage. Okay. So, uh, I want to hi. I think you say Lara or Lara. 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 Lara emotional harm and abuse. It should be. Yeah. The problem, Lara, I agree. I agree. Uh, I was emotionally abused. And I say in my book that unlike the hashtag me too campaign, there isn't any judge that's going to tell me that they're proud of me, that I cut ties with my family right. for their abuse. You know why? Because emotional abuse isn't provable. Right. There's no mark. I can't prove a tone of voice. I can't prove passive aggression. I feel what happened to me as a kid is a total crime. Right. I can't prove it. Right. Because they can gaslight it. Right. If I've got a bruise, I can prove it. So believe me, I get fired up about that, as you can tell, because that's what I went through. There is no system that can definitively say what emotional abuse is and how you prove it because it can all be gaslighted and this is why it works. Good for you, Lara. You're doing such a service to people. 
thank you for being a part of that. And um, mediation is. Uh, got to be very hard, especially when there's a cluster B personality. Well, the funny thing is, and we'll get into this, is Lara has gone through this. Um, I believe she has her own story. Um, she's she's very much in the shared parenting movement. Um, but let's talk about the fact that there are people who are losing access to their kids without being without due process, without being charged with a crime, without being having spoken with a psychologist or being diagnosed yep. or anything like that, um, based on hearsay, based on false allegations. Um, and these people are mediators. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, uh, Ted Bush is an attorney. Yep. So he can, he can practice law. Lara can, Lara can be a mediator for other families. You could lose your kids and you are a therapist. Doctors. Absolutely. No one's immune. No. No, no, I mean, I tell so, everyone who comes into my office who's in a cluster B re a relationship with someone who's a cluster B personality, and they say to me, I'm smart, I'm right. nice, I'm all these things. I'm like, problem is, is you have a heart, right? So your brains don't matter. Right. I treat an ER doc right now who's so wrapped up in a toxic relationship that it's ruining his career. She's spreading rumors about him throughout a hospital. And there's nothing. Ah, oh, Lara, I'm from Colorado. I grew up in Vail. That's why I popped that up. I saw that. <laughs> no, I'm from Colorado. And it's you hard. Guys be, you guys can be frenzies after the interview. I would love Just that. Find, but Lara, find I'm it. sure that you can uh, have compassion for what it's like sitting in a dynamic when you're having a couple divorcing and you don't always see the cluster B coming out. You know, we have one that's usually overtly emotional, one that's really cold. We tend right. to really listen to this emotional person. And that person sometimes ends up being the cluster B. And this right. other person's quiet and shut down. And sometimes it's the opposite, but it takes a tremendous amount of time to figure out who's who and how I figure it out is that when a couple comes in, and everything's peachy keen for one couple when they're focused on one person. Let's say that the wife is focused on the husband, but as soon as it changes and the wife has to get focused on, she quits. Ah. Okay. No, I'm smiling. That's how I know. But I'm guess smiling. what? <laughs> I know too late. Yeah. And I end up treating the person who's left in therapy trying to deal with that person. So there is nothing right now in our legal system or there isn't even an inventory, right. a test to prove emotional abuse because gaslighting is right. the way that they get out of it. I didn't mean it that way, you know. Well, um, well, well that's the thing. We're, we're creating a mental health issue and yes. dealing with it legally, with legal precedence. And yes. the wrong people are making the decisions. Agreed. So we need emotional Agreed. experts involved in custody battles not yeah. legal experts. Now, legal experts can sign the dotted line once we're done speaking to the emotional expert or the counselor or the therapist or the, yeah. the psychologist, but, and to make it legal, that's really all that they should do is just sign the document. But they yeah, should you be know, making the decision or mediating a yes. custody dispute because we need a professional that can discern two people that are maybe both jerks. Maybe I was a jerk too, cool but I'm a good dad and I was willing to walk sure. away. I yeah. had my part in it. I, yeah. I started to clean up my stuff. It didn't get better yeah. on the other side. I was well enough to walk away and sober, completely sober. I, 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 I had enough. So, good. but what, it, what, but here's the wrath. What happens when you have a narcissist or borderline and you defy them, you wake up and you say, I'm done. They I can't manipulate do anymore. your kids is what they do. They use their children. Right. They manipulate your kids. And that's the thing is that I'm a product of both parents married three to four times each. Okay. Yeah. And it was like round and around for me, um, people in and out all the time. We weren't cared about, but we were tools. Um, and I have a very toxic ex. You and I talked mm -hmm. about him. Uh, in yeah. the beginning, he's very much an adult child and addicted yeah. to video games and other things. And there's no communicating with him. So I, I choose to be on Our Family Wizard, which is a co-parenting app 
that is connected to the courts on some level, but sure. it helps you document patterns. And the reason I like it is because, for example, recently he threatened to no longer pay for her tutoring. Yeah. Tutoring. Okay, no one likes tutoring. It's not right. like it's fun. But right, she right. You know, struggled in, in math and chemistry and we had to get her, she's very right brained, my left handed creative little artist, uh, beautiful child that I have. Yeah. And I was, you, you, you can't not pay for tutoring. It's part of our stipulation. You pay half a medical and half of uh, extracurricular. And so if you follow through on this, then I'm going to have to seek legal advice. And I would right. rather not do that. Right. So he comes back and says, I'm lecturing him and threatening. So I said, <laughs> believe me, I said, well, let's. Like unpack. a child. Yeah, I am. I'm like, no, let's. No, he, he was. That's like something a teenager would say. No, I'm not even kidding you. And his favorite word to me is whatever. No, oh, I think I lost you for a sec. You're back now. Oh, I said his favorite word is whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a good one. So yeah. what I said is let's unpack this. You actually threatened not to pay for the tutoring. I'm telling you that it's part of our stipulation. I'm not lecturing you. I'm reminding you of what the rights and obligations are. And if things get ugly, I'm letting you know that I am going to seek legal help. Because it's, and let's top this, he's a school teacher. Wow. And he doesn't want to pay oh. for tutoring. So we know that there are school teachers in our schools that are yes, abusive and whatever with their own children. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, when my ex-husband in his own mind can gaslight anything and, and twist everything that I'm lecturing him, I'm just informing him. These are the cost of braces. This is the cost of tutoring. Right. And if you're coming at me that you're not going to pay for it, I kind of is a threat, but he says, I'm the threatener. See, he just loops it around. Right. So what, what, what this app does for me is it allows me to document things, the emotional abuse that I go through with him. It right. allows me to document it. But what I have to do, my responsibility in this is to remain poised and not let him get me to be an asshole. Right. Because that's what he wants. That's what he wants. And I have right. learned because uh, my mother is very passive aggressive that way. I've learned to not short circuit anymore. And it takes the will of the gods. At God. Being okay, I'm God. telling you, because they know just how to get under there and just make you so angry. Precisely. So yeah. What I've learned about modulating my own emotion is it trumps their emotional abuse, my ability to modulate me. So mm -hmm. that means sometimes I need three or four days to sleep on something and I'm sure. doing a lot of writing it out. And then I try to Deleting decrease, it. get to my bottom line and uh -huh. make what I think a court system could hear and agree with. Right. Um, the problem is, is that we short circuit around these people. We lose our ability, ability to to modulate our emotion. And so my game changer is self-control. Right. A poise is the word that I'm living this year. And boys, it, it has been tested. <laughs> Never choosing poise again. But yeah. especially because when you stay calm, they crank it up. And, oh, you know, yeah. you've got to feel like you need to do something or say something to keep it from getting out of hand. Um, you know, I've had the police called on me in front of my children because I was defiant about when and where she wanted me to meet her at a police station for no reason. Um, so well, because I said life, no. You're your children, that daddy's bad. Right, right. And and so my kids are asking me about this and I have to sort of soften the answer, but she lies to them. So I have to say things like, and tell me if I'm wrong for saying it, because my kid's telling me that I'm is telling a lie that mommy said. And I go, baby, I'm sorry. I don't know why mommy told you that. I'll talk to her about it. And that's the most damage control I can do is say, I'm sorry. That's not true, baby. I don't know why mommy told you that. That's perfect. And I'll talk to her about it, but I'm not going to say that it's true. I'm not going to acknowledge that it's okay. And I'm going to be honest and transparent, yes. even if it makes them uncomfortable. I'm not yeah. going to badmouth her, but I'm going to say no. That is untrue. 
I don't know why mommy told you that. I'm I love sorry. It. That's a perfect answer. You know, I can say that that the will of the gods. That the will of the gods. It does. It takes it sometimes. I remember when I was growing up under my mom and and um, she would say something very horrible in front of others to me, like um, I was willing to sell you for twenty five cents or best offer or other horrible things like don't worry, someone will marry you. Right. And then I would say, wow, that really hurt. And then people would do this to me. She loves you. She didn't mean it that way. Other people. Mm -hmm. So when right. my daughter began coming to me at an age when she could clearly see who her dad was and she would say things to me like need to download or be sad or upset returning from a weekend to which she no longer goes to those. But she would say, dad did this and he ignored me all day and he played his video games. He forgot to feed me dinner. And, um, you know, I'm not I don't feel like I'm important. And I would come in and say, you're very important. And I'm sorry that he doesn't make you feel that way, but that is how your dad is. Right. And it's right. not your fault that he's that way. And, and I think I, you can't I think control if he changes or not. So I, when she tells me my dad is this way and he is that way, I will mm -hmm. agree with her because she's not crazy. Right. She's she not. made me feel crazy. Right. Like, oh, she loves you. Right. So yeah. I validate it. Now, I don't start the conversations and, and make him a bad person. But if my child brings it up, you address it and I'll, you I'll validate that. Yes, that is how your dad is. And unfortunately, he's not going to change. So you have to accept him as he is and decide what type of relationship you want to have. Wow. Let me tell you, in the long term, what I've seen hands down, even if it takes 30 years. OK. Right the kid will figure out who the bad parent was. They Absolutely. figure it out. You stay the course. You, you, you take it on the chin sometimes. You, you stay focused. You stay responsible. You stay- The more calm you can be, the crazier they get, the more right. obvious it becomes to the child. Right. Because you yeah. know who the real judge is at the end of the day? It's going to be your children. Yeah. They, it's so sad. Yeah, I hate that. They have to end up know, being their own- the, the, you know, a lot of parents will go, you know, they say, and, and, and that's why I fight so hard. But, you know, when your kids just deal with it, pay your child support. When your kids are 18, they'll be able to make their own decisions or blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, you know what? By the time my kid's probably 15, he's going to have friends and not want to hang out with his dad. So I'm trying to get these these very tender years, uh, you know, as a father and raise them because I know that I'm going to have to let them go eventually. And they're going to have, yes. you know what I mean? So I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to let this be. If this is you know, the last thing I do on earth, yeah. Uh, in it California, will be to advocate for this. In California, kids can choose at 14. Right. Well, yeah, getting emancipated. and, and But the judge still ultimately decides. But that yeah, child can say, I'd decide. like to. But unless sure. your ex, well, and maybe your ex really would take it to court. Mine didn't. He accepted her decision uh, because she had been crying to go since very, very, very young because of his right. own issues, right? right. Um, and the interesting thing too about these cluster B personality disorders that we haven't covered that I want to in the next 15 minutes is they always see themselves as the victim when they are the perpetrator. Right. And so that emotional abuse, again, that, you know, Lara had had discussed is it's not provable. Unfortunately, it's just unless you're leaving a mark on someone, our law has it that they can't prove it. And if you think about proving it from a court of law, how would they do that? What well, measures would they take? They have to come up with something. So the only thing, the, the thing that courts do nowadays, and, and this is the saying, document, document, document. Yes, like that's said, why your app, our family, app. get on and, it immediately. And, and I've told my ex I want to use it from now on. And you know what she does? Ignores that I even said it. So when I go to court, we, we, that, if, right? if we have 50, 50, oh, I have so much stuff. I can okay, write good. a book. Um, you know, you and, Monday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I might need your help because you're the author. So, I can help. You have, you have, <laughs> let's talk about this real quick. You have, how many books do you have? Oh, gosh. One, two, three, four. I'm dropping another one in April 9th this year. Or April 21st this year. That's called Your Pocket Therapist. That's following up, but it's your family. So I have Success Equations, A Path to Living an Emotionally Wealthy Life. Um, yeah. 
This was how I really learned to modulate my emotions and I made psychological equations and I live those daily. That's how I saved my life, to be quite honest. Right. Um, I wrote Loving Yourself, The Master of Being Your Own Person like 10 years ago and self-published, but my traditionally published books are Success Equations and then I've got But It's Your Family, Cutting Ties with Toxic Family, Loving Yourself in the Aftermath. Your pocket therapist is talking about uh, dealing with toxic, quick hacks to dealing with toxic people while empowering yourself. Right. I learned over time these quick hacks or these quick things like silence is your superpower. Don't engage, you know, right. all the all the needing the force of the gods to help me shut my mouth when I really want to say something. Um, this book really gives you a daily, it's a daily devotional. It's just quick doses of some yeah. treatment because so many people have said to me, I want to put you in my pocket. So I thought, okay, I'll put myself in your pocket. I have gotten that a lot, but that's only because I'm five, five. Oh, so cute. So <laughs> I've got another book dropping in 2022, which for me is probably the best book I've ever written. And it's adult survivors of toxic families, how to deal with holidays staying in no contact and overcoming toxic shame uh yeah. because you know even if our children are shaming the other parent this is something i think is really important um i would have if i could have my daughter and the only way i could have her would be to be with my ex-husband to get her i would do that over and over and over again because that's how much i love her mm -hmm. Sometimes when we are going against the other parent, we're going against half of who our child is, who they identify themselves to be. And too many parents talk bad about that, but they don't realize that they're also hurting their child in some way. Like my mom always compared me to my dad, the bad guy. So I was like, wow, I must be really bad. A part of me must be really bad. You're acting right. just like your mom. You're acting just like your dad. The thing is, is my daughter is, was destined to be mine and be my girl in this lifetime. And if, if that, if the only way to get her, and I've told her this is to be with your dad over and over and over again, just to have the baby, I would do it. I would deal with all his crap so that I could have you so that no part of her feels toxic or unlovable. Right. right? Because I love this individual child so much that if if that's what it took instead of the wonderful boyfriend that I have now, if the mm -hmm. only way I could get London was right. this way, I would do it a million times. Well, a lot of it too is 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 especially in this process of healing is is a lot of things that we go through grow us. And well, and we have that choice too, is is you become, you know, sharper, stronger, smarter. Yeah. Um, and you can't get better without mistakes. You cannot get better without pain. You, but you know, some people, some people give into it. What advice yeah. would you give to someone who's, let's talk about, I want you to speak to the parents out there. And I, and then, and, and maybe there are a lot of parents who, who constitutionally in their minds aren't well enough to hear your words. Sure. So do this for me. I know you got to go. You got a, a few minutes left, but I want to give you enough time for your next podcast. What would you say to these, these borderlines, these narcissists? And they may not want you to call them that, but these uh, alienating parents, these parents that are struggling with reality, if they can even hear our words, if they're just, their butts are hurt about the fact that you cheated on them or you were mean to them in the relationship, but you were always a good parent. What would you say to those parents that that are using their children's as their own emotional weapons to cope or to deal with some sort of trauma or mental illness or whatever? What would you say to them? Karma will come. That's what yeah. I would say. They will lose at the end. They might not lose until 30 years, but they will lose and they will have done a, a, a tremendous amount of damage to their children. The person they because claim I know they, they won't hear me. Right. The level of self righteousness and their their narrative and all their proof mm -hmm. that they think they have, they're not going to hear me. Right. So I would send them a warning that what you reap, you will sow. Those are the laws of cause and effect, existential. It may not be apparent in a court system of human beings that can be manipulated, but if it doesn't get just now, it will find its way to justice. It will. And the hard and like thing said, the other parent that I'd want to talk to is the one who's being alienated, who's losing and crying and, and so scared every day 
and and struggling so hard is that you have to modulate your emotion. The more calm and rational you can be, the more evident the abuser will be. Right. Okay. Right. Um, um, it's so important that you allow that person the space to be crazy. See, we try to make them not crazy. We try to control the conversations. We try. I, I try say, to- come on stage. Because when they come to you, they're going to feel safe. Now, this is going to happen over time. So you, my friend, have to be patient. Provide a home that is safe and loving. And the way that I described right or wrong, maybe people will disagree with this, but I didn't want to talk bad about her dad. So I described him the best, most loving way I could as he's broken. Right. So like if if, if he had, let's say uh, he was in a wheelchair, that would be more obvious to her that he's, he can't fully function. Okay. Or, or, or because he's hurting it's inside. Here, or it's in here where he's broken. We can't see it, but that the brokenness isn't her fault. It's not, he's broken because there's a lack of something in her that isn't lovable. You know, so when our kids are carrying our shame, And we're lying to, you know, your dad stole money from me or your dad, whatever. All the lies are coming. If they can come to you and you can be rational, be very rational with them and say, like you did, baby, that's not true. I don't Mm -hmm. know why mommy or daddy is telling this this to you. You You don't worry about it. You let daddy handle it. You let yeah. daddy take care of you because see, there are, there are kids that are sent in as messengers now to yeah. tell mommy told me, daddy told me, no, we take that away. Our kids aren't here to take care of us. And we're not, get, my kids get interrogated every time they get picked yes. up. Yes, But yes, Bobby, I, I do agree with what you're saying. Bobby has written that. Yes. You have to be very patient. Eventually everyone will see the truth. It's so true, Bobby. It's so true. And patience is a very, hard emotion to wear Mm -hmm. because our preconceptions or our fears make us want to, you know, get out there and and get our truth out there. But I'm telling this, I have your superpower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more you don't engage, the more they amp up, the more crazy they look. You have, we, we didn't touch on everything, but I, I will invite you back uh, once we can work that out. Um, Bobby did want to know, um, you had mentioned this earlier that you were going to start doing a podcast. He wants to know what is the name of her podcast. And so I don't know. Bobby, I, I, been, uh, I think pondering you, should it. you should definitely go with Sherapy. I know. That's what I was thinking. Like Sherapy around toxic family or toxic family Sherapy. Uh, so I, I, I am a, a songwriter and a little creative. So if I, I'm going to do come up with some names for your podcast oh, around, around therapy and just throw you some ideas okay. and, uh, and it's I free of charge because <laughs> you yeah, came you on the show and on I, how to do one. Cause I have no idea how to do one or where to put it or anything. So I will, I'm I will help you. Off. I am very basic. Uh, it works. But, I got the, the best thing that I bought today was my laptop's camera wasn't perfect. Uh, it was like a 720 HD. So for $20, I got one that was 1080. It was probably the best investment. I am a singer songwriter. So this was already uh, in existence. Yeah, I have a microphone because I had a radio show for a while. You can, um, you can get like all this stuff for very cheap. Podcast. So I okay, you, know what you, yeah. you can help me. And thank you for having me. You know, this topic is really important. You're so brave to do it. I appreciate the work you're doing in the world. Um, I'm thankful you found me. Um, I, I, you know, I think that there's so much to be said here. I think, you know, future shows could be motherless children. Another show could be fatherless children. Um, oh my gosh, yes, toxic, yes, Tess. Oh, that's a whole show for me is toxic grandparents. We talk about my, how many years my my grand my mother. And my, you know, my dad gets to see the kids because I'm, I'm currently living here because of court and financial stuff and having to pay child support rather than afford my own home with my kids 50 50. Um, you know, and, and we'll talk about all that for another show because I need another that. issue. Whoever's yeah. the provider. Yeah. OK, well, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for everyone that tapped in and called in. And I have a podcast coach now. Like, how great could this be? Yes. 
So again, <laughs> copy the super. I know it's going to help so many people on my page. Thank you for being brave enough to do it. And go check out Dr. Sherry's page, Dr. Sherry uh, Campbell, PhD. If they type that in, that, that's your yes. Facebook page. That's probably yeah. one of the best places. And you're on Instagram. You share yeah. a lot of your quotes from your books, which I started reading. Yes. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Can't wait. All right. Bye now. Thanks,